Buzzy Ant is a social media analytics firm that has worked closely with the Boston Police Department since 2011. The company can pull real-time and past data from Twitter and Facebook feeds as well as internet forums and even mobile chat rooms. Buzzy Ant uses this data to help police solve crimes and prevent riots or gang fights. Tim Jones is the CEO of Buzzy Ant, has worked in Boston for 10 years. He joins me now via Skype. And Tim, you are currently working with the Boston police on this particular investigation. What is the nature of the work that you are doing with them and what have you found out so far? Um, well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to uh, to be on the program as well as to speak to you about what we're doing here with Buzzy Ant. Um, without going into too much detail, um, I like to break um, what's going on in social media into kind of uh, what's going on currently in social media and what's gone on in the past. Um, with respect to what's gone on since the attack, um, there's obviously a lot of new content and a lot of new information that's being put out there by people on various social channels. So we're actively collecting that information as it's being generated so that we can analyze it in near real time and try to provide as much uh, new tips as we possibly can. What I think is actually um, is more valuable longer term is to actually do what we refer to as social media forensics, is to go back into historical social media using some proprietary technology that Buzzient has to see are there patterns or trends that occurred previous to the attack that could actually lead to much more definitive um, identification of the suspects. And I, unfortunately, I can't speak any further than that right now. All right, now we are hearing that there was no chatter or no indication leading up to this. Can, can you confirm that, that, that you are seeing that as well? No real evidence, no real tracks, or, or can you really make the invisible visible? Um, without getting into too much detail, I would make the point that um, there are uh, social media who are active on the major channels, the Facebooks and the Twitters, but social media has actually existed for more than a decade in the form of user uh, uh, internet used at forums. So Buzzian has the ability to uh, to do some proprietary analysis of historical forums. So again, I don't want to get into any details of what this particular analysis is yielding to date, but we are actively working on kind of taking a historical look back to see if we can detect any patterns. Now, you guys also use this technology to help predict events. I understand law enforcement reached out to you back uh, with the London bombings many years ago. Tell me how the technology works in, in terms of predicting things that haven't actually happened yet. Yeah, well, this is something that I, I like to say is, um, is was a, a side benefit of the technology we developed. But we have uh, determined over a long period of time that there are patterns which emerge, which um, in certain cases, if you kind of think of it like a, a sine curve or a sine wave, sometimes we see patterns in uh, public sentiment before an event actually occurs. Now, in the case of London, uh, we began to base the, in the case of London, we began to see that there were patterns that had occurred in, in on conversations, and later on you would actually see events taking place throughout the city of London. We actually first proved this point during the 2009 Iranian election, where we were actually monitoring what people were saying in English, not Farsi, English only, about the Iranian election, and we actually saw that in many cases, um, comments that were being made by uh, revolutionaries uh, pre uh, predicted or predated certain things that took place on the ground. So it's, um, it's a little bit of a look ahead technology. We're, we're very coy about how we're doing it, but we actually have seen historical patterns of that behavior, both in the uh, public safety and security world, but also in the financial services world as well. Now, you also have a background in explosive detection technology. This particular bomb, we're just getting more information about it. It may or may not have been remotely detonated. We're hearing that uh, six pressure cookers were filled with explosive materials. Uh, based on what you know about explosive detection, what can you tell us about how it seems this bomb may have worked and how your technology uh, could, could glean more information from what police actually have in their hands? Um, well, let me start with the, the latter one. Uh, with particular respect to the, uh, the explosive pipe, one of the things we're actually trying to do is to determine whether or not certain questions were being asked about different types of explosives. So this is most likely, the, you know, based upon what I am hearing, based, it is not something that's, uh, it's C4, HMX, uh, uh, TAP-P, or one of the more complex explosives. So if there have been people that have, for example, been on online chat rooms historically asking certain questions, um, 
and um, that could provide us data that could lead us to some determination of what the actual explosive device that, uh, was actually that was actually used in the device. Now, with respect to uh, explosive detection. There are other technologies which don't have anything to do with social media, which can actually be used to do standoff detection of explosives, most notably in the vapor phase. And there's technology that um, I, my investment fund, TBJ Investments, has invested in in the past that can do some uh, standoff detection of explosives in vapor form. So that allows you to actually find out that there's an explosive nearby and actually generate an alert. Now, can you explain to us how, given what law enforcement has uh, and the lack of evidence, do they have sort of what they need or what kind of information can they get based on what they have, based on how this bomb was made that might lead to more information about who might be behind this? Yeah. Um, again, without going into details, I'd like to say that social media, when used in a forensic basis, can basically come up with three um, critical types of data, people, places, and things. So, you know, who is talking about uh, which particular topics and where are they talking? Where being which social media channels or forums and if there is geographic information available geographically where they are located. So I would say that the, the, the three basic types of information that can be gleaned from social media in a forensic context really comes down to the people, places and the things. Whether or not there have been particular individuals asking certain questions on certain social channels and whether or not that can be used to triangulate their location as well as to gain information about the, the type of uh, substance used in the, uh, in the actual explosive devices. Now, Tim, I mentioned earlier that the first 24 hours of an investigation like this are incredibly critical. We are nearly at that 24 hour mark. How concerning is it that we don't have more information? Is a lot? Is there a lot that law enforcement isn't telling us at this moment? Well, I'm, again, I'm not privy to the particular um, um, internal information within the Boston Police Department or, or other law enforcement agencies. We're basically a, have been basically offering our services pro bono to the city since 2011 for the purpose of using social media uh, in this uh, particular context. I would say that uh, from my experience, both in the explosive detection field prior as well as, as in social media with buzzing it, um, is to take confidence in the fact that there are a lot of really smart people in law enforcement, in the three-letter agencies who are working on this, who actually, from my experience in social media, have uh, a higher degree of sophistication than a lot of the technologies that are used in the commercial world. So despite the fact that we're, uh, there's a, a general mantra about the first 24 hours, I would take solace in the fact that there are smart people who have been thinking ahead that some uh, occurrence like this might actually happen at some point in time and have sprung into action. And they're going to be working diligently um, for a good while. So um, I, I would take confidence in, in that and the abilities of the people who are basically serving us and trying to keep us safe every day.